Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday, the 13th of October, and you join us as we continue our theme of Harvest Thanksgiving, looking at more trees in the Bible after Sunday and our tour through the story of redemption with trees. Today we come to a very strange tree, and this particular tree is a fig tree that Jesus cursed. And as it's Wednesday on the blog, we always focus in on prayer with some ideas for prayer and suggestions for prayer. Today's story of the fig tree will help us understand prayer a little bit more. And we find the story in Mark chapter 11. So let's read the story together as Jesus encounters this fig tree and as he looks for fruit on the tree, and just as we've been thinking about over the last couple of days. So Mark 11 verse 12. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry and seeing in the distance a fig tree. So there's the mention of the tree, a fig tree and leaf. He went to find out if it had any fruit. And again, there's the fruit that is mentioned. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Now, this seems a a little bit strange that Jesus would find a tree, there are no figs on it, and he would then, as it were, pronounce a, a, a curse on the tree that no one's ever going to eat from this tree again. Now, there are a number of things that we need to pick up from this story. First of all, we have a fig tree and we have leaves, and that immediately makes us think about Genesis and Adam and Eve, whenever they had first sinned and eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they then tried to cover up their sin with fig leaves. And in a way, Jesus is saying here about this fig tree that it is covering up the fact that it's got no fruit with all of the leaves. He has to look through the leaves to see if there's any fruit there and he doesn't find any. So, There's an element of deception, as it were, with the tree because there are so many leaves, you can't see whether it's producing fruit or not. And the application for us would be that if we try to cover ourselves up, our lives up, not telling anyone that we trust in Jesus, not showing anyone the fruit that we should produce, we're no better than someone who's producing no fruit because whenever we look beyond the leaves, there's nothing there. So the disciples heard him say this about the tree and I suppose at that point they think not a big lot about it. They heard it, they knew it was a strange thing to say and they move on. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. Now what's happening here? All of a sudden the story has changed. We're no longer thinking about a tree, but we're now into the temple. But there's a lot that connects the two stories and we will find out that we return to the fig tree at the end of the story as well. So first of all, Jesus saw a fig tree that was supposed to produce figs, but there was none there. Jesus now enters the temple. The temple is supposed to be, as we'll find out in a moment, a place of prayer. But it's not what Jesus expects to find in the temple. There isn't prayer going on. Instead, there's buying and selling. There are money changers in the temple. There are people selling doves. So It looks as though this is a temple that's dedicated to God from a distance. But whenever you get up close and you look behind the leaves, as it were, the facade of the temple, you suddenly discover it's a den of iniquity. And Jesus is angry that the temple is not producing the fruit that it should produce. And so he goes in and he overturns the tables and he drives the people out of the temple who are misusing it. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. So instead of prayer taking place, it's become a place for robbers. And 
it's very like the fig tree where it's supposed to be producing fruit. It's supposed to be producing figs, but there's nothing but leaves there just covering it over, making it look good. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When the evening came, they went out of the city. So this whole episode has taken place at the temple in Jerusalem. And the religious leaders of the day who were quite happy with the money changers and the selling of items in the temple because it funded their lifestyles, they were afraid because the people were beginning to see through what they were doing, their insincerity, their lack of spirituality and their lack of commitment to God. And so they were looking for a way to kill him and get him out of the way and stop all this and get back to what they had always done. So after all this has taken place at the temple, they now leave the city again. They had travelled in past the fig tree and now they're going out. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree. Whoa, here's the tree back again. So this is the next day. This is not a long period of time. And the fig tree was withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. So Peter makes the connection and he sees that Jesus said this about the fig tree and now it is no more. It has withered up. There's nobody ever going to eat figs from this tree again because there's no life in it anymore. And Peter is amazed at this and he points it out and he he wants an explanation, as it were, as to what Jesus was doing and why he had been so harsh on this tree. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. So Jesus doesn't really answer the problem of the fig tree. He just tells Peter, well, you should have faith in God. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. So Jesus immediately turns this from the fig tree into a lesson on prayer. The temple wasn't being used for prayer. So Jesus is saying, look, this is what prayer is all about. Have faith in God and you can have Prayers that will move mountains. Have faith that will move mountains. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. So this all becomes a lesson in prayer. And Jesus is moving prayer away from the temple into his followers. That each one of us now have a responsibility of prayer. That where before the temple was a place that you went to pray, now any of us can pray. By making it easier to pray, there's obviously the danger that it becomes so commonplace that we don't bother that we don't take the time to pray. And that always amazes me. It amazes me about my own life, how lacking in prayer I can be at times. But it also amazes me about church life, how lacking in prayer we can be, where we have troubles and we have things that we need to be doing to answer God's call and we'll have meetings about it, but we won't take the time to buy in prayer about it and we need to come to God and we need to pray and we need to ask God believing that we've received it and then receiving his answers to our prayers we're also to make sure that we're not holding anything against anyone else because that will be a way that we will not receive the forgiveness that we need we need to forgive others And therefore God will forgive us. So what do our lives look like? Do we look like fig trees? That there's, from a distance we look healthy. There are lots of leaves there. But when someone looks closely, perhaps there's no fruit. Are we like a temple 
where people should come and, and find God and be able to pray. But whenever they do come, they look at our lives and they see nothing of any spiritual worth. Jesus tells us to have faith in him and believe in him and come to him and ask and he will provide us with whatever we need to follow him and serve him. So let's come to him in prayer. Lord God, as we come to you today, we ask that we may not be like the fig tree, which looks good on the outside, but isn't fulfilling its purpose in producing fruit. Lord, help us to produce the fruit that you want from us. Lord, may we not be like the temple that's supposed to be a place of prayer. And we know now, Lord, that you have asked us to be prayers. Help us, Lord, not to be full of our own ideas of money changing and selling, but instead help us to be people of prayer who ask of you and expect of you and see your answers to prayer. So Lord, help us to produce the fruit that we need each and every day. Amen.